And that ended up being the issue that, that tore the community apart was, was the question of feminism. A lot of, you know, kind of men in STEM. Feminism oh, tore apart the feminist degrees. community. I know. I know. I, <laughs> the tore the community yeah. apart. Is that yeah. an accurate assessment of oh, I mean, totally. tore the community apart? No, it totally. just created a Every spinoff community. group of losers that no one cared about, like Steve Shives. <laughs> You know, the atheism well, it, it plus. totally did destroy right. the atheist community. It did really it? did. The oh yeah, absolutely. Elevator gate. That's what. Uh... Yeah, but the the schism has been like long lasting. So I'm, you know, I still know all these people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, you've got like atheists for liberty and things like this, because essentially it has just split down parts and lines, mm -hmm. uh, because of course the left makes everything split along parts and lines, mm -hmm. and. So you've got the anti-SJW atheists who are my position on the SJWs and the SJWs who that's can't. true. Like Aaron Raw is a huge SJW, massive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, disgusting. The what's the other guy? Matt Dillahunty. Matt Dillahunty. Yeah. Huge, huge SJW. Mm -hmm. the, 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 Sam the Harris, anti-SJW. Yeah. Richard Dawkins, we're still fighting over, right? It's hard to say. No, <laughs> because he's been posting some fucking brain that takes really recently. Oh, about what? Sorry. Now nobody yeah. wants him. Is that what you're saying? Both sides yeah. are like, nah, we don't yeah. want Dawkins. You keep it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah it's kind of. <laughs> Hilarious. And this all started because some guy asked a girl in an elevator for coffee like, or something. Yeah, to come back to his room, and she said no, and then that was, and then he didn't pressure her after that, and yeah. apparently that was like a kinder rape. So, <laughs> oh my god. I I totally forgot about that. Yeah. But that's what's so crazy about it. Like, it was literally the most mundane thing. Someone was in, mm -hmm. and I, they had been, were like, they'd been talking before that, right? Like, it wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't he not even a stranger? Like, how dare you ask me like, up to your room? Oh my God. You asked me up to your hotel room and it's nighttime. Oh my God. That's just, oh my God. Oh, I was so scared. Yeah. It's pathetic. <laughs> not, not, I mean, not, again, I'm not trying to bash an entire, uh, family of fields, I'm just saying, like, culturally, well, let's just say that the idea of some women coming forward as feminists was so threatening to them that it tore the community apart. Minor. <laughs> All this is so incendiary. I know, I know, this is so crazy. No, it's because people were, they were arguing about whether oh. asking someone out is fucking misogynist or not. Like, that, it wasn't because, oh, they came forward as feminists and they felt so threatened. Yeah, threatening. I mean, there, there were there were a bunch of Me Too allegations in the atheist community when Me Too kicked off. They're, they're absolutely yeah, but that was years later, wasn't it? Uh, only a couple. Mm -hmm. well, uh, David, who was the guy that got the David Me Too Silverman? Yeah. David Silverman, yeah. But and this, he, he that, got that, that was years later, cancer. though. It, of course it was. It was years yeah. later when Me Too was a big social media hoo-ha. Right. Um, and it was so obviously and transparently fake as well mm -hmm. that it's just like you read the write up and it just it's so like nothing happens like the, the in her write up. It's written in this like, oh, and he, you know, pushed me against the wall and touched me. And then we went to the bed and then I said I didn't want to have sex. And so he said, OK, and I got up and left. And it's like, <laughs> right. So you would you were getting off with each other and then he wanted to go further and you said no thanks and he said okay fair enough and then you left <laughs> this is not a fucking me too case bitch you know Look, uh, men that and can't read the minds of women is just misogyny okay you don't understand <laughs> they should just know beforehand it's mad and well and the thing is like she had consented to everything up until that point and then yeah she he stopped so there was nothing there david silverman did nothing wrong uh but he was getting absolutely grilled like he was some sort of just straight up rapist you know like he captured her in an alleyway and right. you know, done the deed and he was being treated like that and it's like man this is fucking awful but well, um but yeah so i mean he's you know he's a good guy now and he's with atheist for liberty doing a lot of good stuff but uh yeah consequence is just talking shit the, yeah, the problem with so. the atheist community was feminism 100 percent. it was totally cynical obvious power play and it's very early one as well it's it, but the model of the events, the tactics they used, exactly the same as in every other community. So it's mm -hmm. a very established pattern of behavior at this point. Well, so they have I have one playbook, so they just... I just, I want to yeah, make it totally clear here. So you're you're saying basically there's like a skeptic community. There are certain power structures forming in that skeptic community. And the feminists came in and said, we want to be the power players in this community. We yeah. want to use this community to promote feminism. 
yeah. as opposed to and they skepticism or right. atheism or even or on, a, on a cynical it. level they could be in these there could be atheist women who feel like it's too difficult for them to climb the hierarchy of being popular in these communities so it's like oh well, let's change the rules around to make it so you have to listen to us didn't steve shives make a video that was basically saying skepticism is atheism or you can't be or or skepticism is feminism that you can't be he did make that video yeah well, you, you can't you have to be you have to be a if you're a skeptic you have to be a feminist basically is what he said of course and everyone course. was like oh okay yeah. here let me get what you're telling me i have to do something i'm a 14 year old boy i <laughs> i don't nobody tells me what to do well, I just like the idea that under the the title of skepticism, you have to do something. I know. There you go. <laughs> it's a little contradictory to some extent. But. Understanding is part of your desire and decision to make your own videos was in a kind of dialogue with this part of the Internet. And you've continued it up. Like, what is it about a certain kind of youngish man on the internet <laughs> and the subcultures they create that become so i don't know toxic Popular? authority oh my god interesting oh my exciting god. Wait, stimulating <laughs> magnetic the place that people just have to talk about chris hayes the fucking mm. msnbc contributor and contrapoints the world's most famous trans youtuber can't stop talking about what the nerds online are doing <laughs> I know. yes i know it's where the energy is yep you I'm all just, want a fucking piece of it. It's just male bonding. It's fucking hilarious. People love yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the worst part. That's it's all just, it is. Not... It's that simple. Yeah. yeah. It's that. Exactly I mean, we've, we've all seen the little comic where like the people are in the window and everyone's like, you have to let us into your window, let us into your group. And then once they're there, they're like, okay, now we have to exclude you. <laughs> I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Has Chris Hayes never experienced male bonding in his entire life? I mean, well, I think you've just hit on exactly the problem. How does he not know this? I mean, look well, at him, Adam. He's, he's some sort of corporate guy, sociopath, but... isn't he? I guess. <laughs> I don't I think know you he's have a sociopath. To be. Well, I, I'm not, honestly, I think you kind of have to be in a way to operate in these environments. Mm -hmm. I think he's like, a beta male. I'll well, be real. Well, maybe. This is total miscommunication here. Someone tried to actually do some sort of male bonding with Chris Hayes at one time, and he was like, what are you doing? Why, why are you insulting me? What's, we all, what's wrong with my hair? We all know. Like, We've all had that experience. <laughs> We've all had that experience where, you know, growing up, and there's like the one, like a couple or one male kid that like just doesn't, unfortunately, just doesn't get it. Doesn't like, get it. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He doesn't know how to play the game. He's like, no, right. don't. these insults are for fun, you right, asshole. Right. And so to understand the game, I went to a trans YouTuber who also I is know, not part of this who doesn't understand circle. the game either. <laughs> I guess but they are all fascists. What but and that's the thing. It's like, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with all these, you know, beta uh, males or whatever you want to call them that don't understand yeah. the game. They can go off on the internet and create their own communities. But sure, then, totally. Then they feel like they have to come and destroy our manly, manly communities. Okay. They don't understand yeah. the bonding part of the male bonding, no. though. Like they just go straight for the toxic shit. I mean, right. They miss the whole point of the male bonding. Right. It's I've, bonding. I've re I really. <laughs> I really think that's your most conservative point, you know. Really, mine? Yeah, because it's it you because you're appealing to the moral good of the relationship between two people, right? Sure. How's that? But I how's mean, that conservative? Well, I think that's the essence of conservatism. Uh, the conservatism does lean more towards personal interactions, definitely. Yes. Oh, I think I think it's entirely about the sort of bonds of relationship between people. Like yeah. the leftists don't have any bonds. They have shared classes, you yeah, know, so their I... view of community is international and universal and eternal. Right. But like my view of community is local, particular and specific between named individuals with a relatable narrative, a common shared narrative in their relationship. And I think that that that's what friends are, you know, and I think these people don't actually understand what being a friend is you know because they they, ex they they chuck people out for a mere difference of opinion and i'm thinking mm -hmm. fuck man you know i've got some friends I, and family members that I, that I legit think i could probably die for you know it's like they, they had a, di a different opinion Fucking, you know the, these people are so precious to me i'm not going to let them go under any circumstance you know if it, like if it's you know jump off a cliff or they die i'm going to jump off the cliff you know like 
Yeah. It's it's so but but these these people have nothing. No one's sacred. No one's precious. They're all just one of another class. You know, why couldn't I just get another trans friend? You know, I could and then they think of it in this way. You know, oh, I don't have any black friends, I don't have any trans friends. Like Robin D'Angelo thinks in this way, I need more black friends. Like it's in her book, White Fragility. She's she says that you know, in her early life, she didn't have many black friends. And so she had to go out and find black friends. It's like but what if you didn't know any? What if they were all people you just didn't get on you with? You just forced you your know? way into their lives, Sarah. Yeah, what if Come they didn't on. like you? you know? <laughs> it's so weird. You make but, them but like, that's the listen, thing. Like this, she's a white person. People automatically like her. That's what she's thinking. That's the that's the point, though, isn't it? Because, like, totally. She doesn't understand. She's basi- She honestly seems basically autistic, now I think about it like actually autistic to not understand the sort of texture of these relationships and what a relationship is. And most people do all of this intuitively, right? You know, they, they, totally, they, they have a yes. deep emotional connection to their friends and they'll do anything for them, family and do anything for them. They don't, they don't theorize any of this sort of stuff, but I've, I, I've been thinking a lot about it because I think it's actually important that the conservatives understand that when the left is saying, we're going to essentially attack these bonds, black lives matter explicitly said they were coming for the family bonds when that when that happens every conservative and not just conservative just you know normal human being should be of one mind against them on that because that's the worst thing i think you can do breaking breaking these bonds and isolating people is honestly i think the worst thing you can do to them i i have two points i want to make on that and i this might be my bias because Maybe I'm just not hanging out in leftist circles enough. But when you talk about, you know, the bonds of community and stuff like that, I think what what it what are the community intuitions of leftists? And all I can think of is like feeling sorry for people like this is my idea of community. I feel sorry. Fetishizing for minorities. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck is that all about? Uh, yeah. And also when you talk about the loyalty thing. I, I always go back to the height stuff. There's that chart in his book where he mm-hmm. shows that the liberals or the progressives score abysmally on loyalty. Like they yeah. could give they could give a fuck about loyalty. That's scary. Everything is interchangeable. They've got no so attachment scary. to any one person. It's mad. There's, there's only one situation where I can think that that cuts both ways, and that's in the realm of scientific advancement. There are certain times when you have to cut your losses, and it's not good to be... Yeah caught up with some loyalty to something like mask wearing uh with when the when the science uh changes on you but i mean even in recent times we've showed like i the their their hatred for loyalty doesn't even help in that one area in the scientific realm when you have to cut your losses on certain things but that's probably Mm. just because we're completely tribalized now but but what is community to the left these days i don't know i wish someone could category could teach that's what it means category